I'm going to show you how to design bootleg hip hop merch with Adobe Photoshop. Yo, what's the crack legends? Today I'm going to walk you through my process for designing vintage hip hop merch. I'm talking about those sick 90s style rap designs with a focus on bold 3D typography, photo collagen, and flat posterized coloring. If you want more of that bling bling pen and pixel style, then check out my other bootleg rap merch tutorial at the link above where I focus more on that kind of treatment and style. All right, gang, now open up Photoshop and let's get cracking. So since this is going to be a little t-shirt design, I'm going to open up a new airport that will be A3 in size. Now rather than beginning with the photo bashing, I'm going to jump straight into the typography here. And I'm just going to type out Big Mac in a really nice varsity style font called Campound that I got on Invado Elements. This t-shirt is going to be for the legend Mac Hansen who plays rugby for Ireland. I love him so much. He's just hilarious. Fine. First rugby World Cup. Set. Time off. I've duplicated my text layer and then rasterized it. Now I've gone into edit, transform and into warp and I've gone up here to the drop down and I'm selecting arc lower. And then I'm gonna bring it down to about minus 15 to get that nice arcing effect on the bottom side of the lettering. But then go into layer, into layer styles and go into stroke. I put an inner stroke of about eight pixels onto the letters and select gradient. I've just used a nice light blue to dark blue here. After that, I go into bevel and emboss, select stroke emboss. I put the technique on smooth. And I just play around with the depth a little bit to get a bit of a shine on the edges. I leave the size on about eight pixels as well so it matches the stroke and I leave the gloss contour on that zigzaggy line looking thing there. I then click on contour and just play with the range until it looks kind of cool to me. After that I click on gradient overlay and as you can see I've got a preset gradient here. I'm just going from a dark blue into a light blue into white back into dark blue and fading into a light blue on the bottom. If you want to pause the video and just copy my gradient here that'll help. All I want to do is give it that classic sort of 90s looking chroming effect, you know, that airbrushed kind of vibe that you get on a lot of those hip hop t-shirts. And this is probably the quickest way to do it. I've made sure that my blend mode is on multiply and the style is linear with the angle at 90 degrees going from the top to the bottom. After that, I go into pattern overlay because I want to put a nice blocky black line across the middle to really amplify that effect. Again, having my blend mode on multiply. When I thought that was looking pretty sick, I then just proceed to the bottom half of the typography. I type out the Mac Daddy because Mac is the Mac Daddy and I use a cool old English style font called English Town. I'm pretty sure this is free and you can get it on the font or one of those uh, free font sites easy peasy. Now to give it the same layer size treatment as the Big Mac letters I just right click on the Big Mac layer and say copy layer style and then I right click on the Mac Daddy layer and click paste layer style. And when I thought they were looking nice and dandy, I just rasterized the layer styles on both of my text layers. I put Big Mac up on the top of the panel and the Mac Daddy along the bottom because I want to put my illustrated elements in the center of the t-shirt and have the text on the top and bottom locking it in and framing it nicely. Now to really give the typography that pure 90s treatment, I'm gonna go into filter and open up this really cool exposure software called Eye Candy. I highly recommend this. It's such a good time saver for chroming and all sorts of effect treatments. I just go into my shape panel here and I click on extrude. I then click on the drop down below and say taper to a point. And as you can see, this is way too much right now. So on the right hand side, I just bring the taper in and the extrude distance in. Just give it that sort of, I guess, like three dimensional depth, a little bit of perspective, if you get me. And easy as that, this has given us a nice extrusion on the letter forms. And then I just go into our levels and I bring the mids down to darken it a little bit. I do like the kind of detail in it, so I didn't darken it too much. And then I thought we were looking nice with the type, so I moved on to the photo bashing part of this design. I've gathered a lot of different photos of Mac Hansen in uh, different action shots and interviews and what have you. I try to get high resolution photos as much as I could for this, but a lot of the time you're just gonna get, you know, pretty low quality images off Google. So what I tend to do is just open up image size and increase the resolution from 72 DPI up to 300. It's not ideal, but it'll it'll make do because we're going to blast this with um, effects and texturing at the end. To really easily cut out the figure in some of these pictures, you can just go into select and select subject. A lot of the time it does a good job, but as you can see, it kind of misses the beat on a few kind of details. So I just go in with a polygonal lasso tool and cut out the rest. After cleaning up my selection, then uh, all I do is click copy. I go back into our t-shirt design artboard and I press control and V or command and V on a Mac and that'll paste our cutout image onto our new artboard. As you can see, I'm just sort of rinsing and repeating here with all of the images that I've picked out, and I'm pasting all of my new selections onto the artboard. 
I'm trying to lay them out in a particular way that looks like there's a little bit of flow to the image, if you get me. Sometimes when subject select uh, gives us a really jagged sort of edge, you can just go into select again and press refine edge and then you can crack up the smoothness or feather to get a little bit of a nicer cut. When you've pasted one of your selections onto the artboard, you can just press Control and T and that'll bring up free transform and that'll allow you to increase the size or decrease the size or spin around your image with the mouse. I'm making sure to keep the images that I want to be at the bottom of the artboard at the front on top of the layers that I want to be at the back of the artboard, if you get me. That way, when we get a little further down the photo collagen line, I can start putting different elements in to blend these photos together in a nice and appealing way. There's no real science here in this process. This is just all by eye. So whatever you think looks good to you, you're onto a winner. Now I wanted to draw a little bit more on the aesthetic and a lot of them have figures within these nice little circle frames. So all I've done is use the ellipse tool, press shift to get a nice perfect circle. I left the stroke white and opted to increase the stroke width to about 17 pixels and then set the fill to black. I then wanted to put this little mug shot of Mac into the circle. So I decided to do the same process by using subject select and copied and pasted them onto our new artboard. I laid them over the circle layer in a nice appealing way that fits the frame. Then to cut them out, I right clicked on the thumbnail of our ellipse layer. I inverted the selection and pressed delete and that just gets rid of all of the image of Mac outside of the circle. I then duplicate the ellipse layer. I grab our magic wand tool and I click on the black part of the layer above and I press delete and that just leaves the frame over Mac here. I then grabbed the ellipse layer that we deleted the center of and I put a nice gradient stroke on it and again go back into bevel and boss. Your settings should still be there from the typography and that just gives it a nice sheen to the edge of the circle which I thought looked pretty nice. Now it's time to start filling in some elements here and making a little bit more of a design out of this. I've got all of these amazing assets from Envato Elements so I picked this nice cool kind of heavenly looking sky background and with the marquee tool I make a selection in a rectangular shape. I press Control c to copy it and Control v to drop it on our artboard and I bring this layer right down to the bottom. With Free Transform I then increase the size so it fills a nice panel underneath the image and this will be our back plate if you get me. Considering Mac plays for Ireland, I then decided I would use a load of little shamrock elements here that I got in Envato Elements. I'm copying and pasting them onto our artboard and I'm just laying them around in a way that I think looks like there's a little bit of flow to them as if they're sort of falling there. Again, using amazing assets from Envato Elements, I take these flame 3D models that I think are gonna work so nicely to blend the kind of like scenes in between these cut out pictures of Mac. So I'm just copying and pasting them and dropping them into different parts between the layers. These old hip hop t-shirts are always heavy on the flames and lightning and I am not shying away from that here. Also from Envato Elements, I found these cool little rugby ball 3D models that I've spun around in different angles and exported out and I'm copying and pasting them onto the artboard. I think it's handy that they're the same color as the official Gilbert balls that you can see Mac is holding there one of the pictures, so happy days. Then to break the typography up from the design a little bit more, I just put a nice soft drop shadow on them. Again, this is just like by eye, nothing is set in stone here. You can see there I grab the sky layer and I go into my HSL slider, which is hue, saturation and lightness. And I'm just spinning the hue around to get more of a pinky green sort of feeling. Cause at the end I want this to be heavy on the green. This is for an Irish rugby player after all. To further fill the artboard, I have merged all of my shamrock layers onto one layer. I've duplicated a number of times and I'm just putting it in and out of different parts here to get a little bit of buzz going on. I then grab this nice 3D model from Envato Elements of uh, rugby posts here and I throw them down in the background. As you can see, I was playing around with it, but it just wasn't really working. I actually end up getting rid of this like further on down the line, but that's just part of this, you know, when you're playing it by ear and building up your design with your idea that you have in mind, uh, there is a lot of trial and error, so don't be put off. If something doesn't work the first time, just keep at it, you know, a little bit of nip tuck, just play around until you're happy out. You can see me here, I've grabbed my Big Mac text layer and I go again into hue and saturation and I drop the hue down to make it a little bit more green and I rinse and repeat with the Mac Daddy layer as well as the circle frame over the mugshot of Mac there. I thought there wasn't enough detail or depth on the sky image so I've just with a marquee tool made a selection of another image of sky and I've copied and pasted that over my background. I then put it onto a soft light blend mode which will take out a lot of the detail and mash it into the background layer, just giving it a little bit more of an artistic feel. As I said, these bootleg hip hop shirts will be nothing without a bit of lightning. So I got these Whopper 3D lightning assets off of Vado Elements again, and I'm copying and pasting them and just laying them all around the artboard, mainly over the action shots of Mac, as well as putting them down in the background over the sky to make it a little bit more menacing and a little bit more badass. 
for a little bit of continuity in our design, I've used the marquee tool to make a square selection of the background, copied and pasted it and brought that layer up above our circle ellipse layer. Then pressing control, I click on the thumbnail of the ellipse layer, which makes a selection. I then invert that selection and press delete, which gets rid of the outside of this sky layer. And as you can see, it gives a nice painterly feeling to that circle frame. So here I am just copying and pasting the rugby ball layer around Again, I'm playing by ear, trying to see what works visually and what doesn't. After that, I grab the eraser tool, I drop the hardness to zero so there's a nice feathery edge and I just start rubbing out different parts of different images to blend them in together. You see, I take Max foot off there that was sticking over the frame. Now I start a little bit of detailing and uh, color correction. So I'm going into camera raw filter and I'm whacking the texture and clarity up as well as dropping the temperature a couple of percent. This is just bringing out a little bit more blue and green in each layer, as well as crisping up the detail to give it that sort of illustrated effect that we love so well on all of these old bootleg hip hop t-shirts. This process can kind of be a pain in the rear end, but it is worth it, believe me, because when you crank the texture and the clarity up on each of these layers, it's gonna make it look so much better. So as I said, bringing the temperature down in camera raw is gonna give them a nice bluey green sort of feeling, as well as making sure each one of these individual photos looks like it's part of the same design, if you get me, rather than just cobbled together haphazardly. Patience is key here, like the detailing process can be pretty monotonous and boring, but it will pay dividends in the end. Here you can see I've taken this back panel image of the sky and I've gone into camera raw and I've just whacked a big vignette on it because I want it to be darker on the edges to blend it more into the black t-shirt that this will hopefully be printed on. And all the while playing it by ear and just copying and pasting different fire layers, flipping them horizontal or, or stretching them with free transform, just providing a little bit more visual interest to the overall design. Once I was kind of happy with my photo collage here, I then decided that I wanted to put some lighting effects on these and I've got these amazing PNGs of lens flares off Neo stock, I believe it was. So I drop this nice blue lens flare over the top of my image here. I then go into my blend modes and I set it on linear dodge, which will give all of the layers below it a really nice glowing effect as if there is some sort of heavenly light hitting it. Then with a really large soft eraser, I go around the edges and feather it in to make sure that the lens flare is only over the photo collaged elements. After this, I then take my burn tool and increase the size of it quite a lot and just start clicking on the edges of the back panel there of the sky, further darkening the edges um, because as I said, I want this to be blending in quite nicely into the black background. Now, what is chrome typography without some nice shines? I've taken this awesome little lens flare and I've just dropped it there and I'm putting it on corner parts of the lettering above on Big Mac. This is kind of that 80s metal aesthetic, you know, these like shiny airbrush typography on album art. I've got this other really nice lens flare uh, also from Neosoc that I've put over the edge of the frame. I didn't like that this was yellow. I wanted it to be blue for a little bit more continuity in our design. So I went into the hue and saturation slider again and just swung it around to blue. I then opened camera raw filter just to drop the temperature down to make it a little bluer and I whacked the exposure up to brighten it up. And then as you can see, there's this kind of annoying like black edge on it. So I've just taken a soft eraser and I'm rubbing that out just to feather it into the design. Finally, I've taken this big sparkly bokeh looking lens flare and dropped it over the top of the design. I've used linear dodge as my blend mode and taken a soft eraser just to kind of bring down the intensity of it a bit. Now the photo bastion process might have been finished here, but I opted to sleep on it because there's a few things that weren't sitting well with me. So I came back with a pair of fresh eyes and decided to change things up. First off, I make a selection of all of the layers of Mac in the circular frame and I duplicate those layers. I then drag them up to the top left corner of the artboard to give a little bit of balance to the composition. I use free transform to nudge some of my layers around to provide breathing space for this frame in the top left corner. I then get this other mugshot of Mac and I use select and select subject and copy and paste in this picture of Mac and do the same thing again, just making a selection of the circle below, clicking on the Mac layer, inverting that selection and pressing delete. I then go into camera raw again and crunch up the texture and clarity and bring the temperature down to match it with the rest of my images. I also thought the image of Mac on the right hand side wasn't looking that great. So I opted to get another image in higher quality, go in with subject select and then clean up my 
my selection with the polygonal lasso tool, again copying and pasting them into the right hand side of our artboard. All the while increasing the size of the different elements to make sure they take up more space in the frame and provide a little bit more visual interest. As I said earlier, this is all trial and error. You can see me thinking on the fly here. I'm not gonna edit these videos too heavily. I want you to see what it's like when it design things and how chaotic it can be, but it is all about thinking on your feet. I then decide to start putting drop shadows on different layers and different elements again to further break them up from each other and provide a little bit more three-dimensional depth to the image. Again, just to make sure they're more in line with the aesthetic of those classic vintage bootleg hip-hop t-shirts. So with one more final pass of nip tuck, just going in and cleaning up different blends and nudging things around, I was finally happy with the overall composition. And I think you'll agree with me, it's looking a lot better now. After that, I save our project as a PSD in case I want to go back and edit anything else. And I then just flatten all of our layers. So once I've flattened the layers and I've got one nice layer of all of the artwork, I open up Camera Raw again. And again, I increase the texture a whole heap and whack the clarity up a little bit as well. After that, I make a new layer above it. I press Shift and F5 and fill the full layer with white. I then go into Filter, into Noise, and click Add Noise. And I put a Gaussian monochromatic noise on it at about 27%. I then set the Blend Mode to Multiply, and this will texture up our artwork with that nice speckled noise effect. After this, I go down to the bottom right-hand corner and I click on our Adjustment Layer panel, and I select Posterize. Posterize will essentially flatten a lot of the gradients out in our image here into pretty recognizable and noticeable color blocks. After this, I go back into our adjustment layers, this time clicking on a levels adjustment layer. This will let us kind of nudge up the whites and bring down the blacks, again, getting more contrast into our image overall. Then I'm gonna stick another adjustment layer on it. Here you can see you can spin the hue slider around to edit the color and get the correct hue that you want. Now for the cherry on top, I want that cracked old school t-shirt print effect and I've gotten this amazing texture from my mate Charlie Pangas, go check out his channel. He is the merch design master. So I copy and paste this texture layer and lay it over our artboard. I then go into our blend modes and I click on multiply and that will leave just the black parts of this texture over our artwork. When I was happy with this, I save it as a new project just called texture and then open camera raw filter again for one final pass. All I'm doing there is nudging the whites up to get as much detail as I possibly can into this. And after all of that typography, photo bashing, texturing and effects, it's looking like we're onto the glamour shots. So that was the vintage bootleg hip hop style design tutorial in Adobe Photoshop and I love making these. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you found the tutorial useful. If you've got any questions, just jump down in the comments. I'll be more than happy to get back to you and hopefully help you further. Don't forget to give me a little like and subscribe and share this video with all your mates if you found it useful. It is the best way to help the channel and I got tons in the pipeline coming up with class video topics. And if you wanna help me continue making these videos for you guys, you can check out my Invalo Elements link in the description where you can get 70% off your first month's subscription. It is an unbelievable resource of assets for all your creative projects. I can't recommend it enough. You can also check out some of my stores at the link in the description where I've got my fonts, my assets packs on sale. You can also get my free assets pack spearheads goodie bag down in the description. There's a, almost 100 goodies in there for you. Also be sure to join our Discord, the Scrap Heap. It's so much crack in there. We just chat away about design, art, like music, anime, everything. Love it. Great spot and you're more than welcome to come in. So with that, I'm gonna love yous and leave yous and I'll see yous all in the next one. Peace.